Hello, this is your instructor. This is the video to teach you how to draw the index space as a three-dimensional object. Looking at these three views, the most simplest view to work with will be the top view and extrude everything upward. So let's copy those portions of the object. make two copies my three layers current we're going to extrude the base of this up and we're going to extrude the cylinder here up separately I'm going to draw a line across the quadrant so I'm snapping a quadrant so that I can remove a part of this object so all I need to extrude is a certain section of it the base so let me trim. I just need this section here. On this feature, I only need this section here to extrude. Put the dimensions back on to get the values. The base is extruded 916 and the cylinder is 1 and 5 eighths. It's always nice to work in an isometric view so we can see what we're doing when we're working in 3D. So we'll go to Southwest Isometric. First command is region. This will tell me how well I did right now if I made a <coughs> well-shaped object if it closes. It did, it closed. So this region, this one as well. Let's see how well we did with the creation of our shape. It worked as well. The base extrudes 9 16 So type pick extrude, select this feature, enter, point up, and type in 9 16 Let's continue. The extrusion of this cylinder is going to be. 1 and 5 eighths. So extrude this region object, point up with the mouse, type in 1 and 5 eighths. Alright, we need to reattach this back to here, which is why I kept this line right here. This might make sure my object snaps are activated, and they are. So I'm going to move this object from the center of the object to the midpoint of, of there. There's two of our parts already completed. As you see there. So orbit. So we had to do one more thing. Draw the hole. To teach you that concept, I need to show you a message from an older video I made of this drawing. It says here, change the UCS. Using the ZA option, this is Z axis option. I need to draw a line down a certain length and out a certain length to draw a circle and then extrude it to turn it into a cylinder. So we're going to be working with the UCS command. This is a video from when I was using AutoCAD 2014 for the same part. Let's go back to southwest isometric, but now I'm going to go to southeast isometric, I believe. Yes, I can see this feature right here. All right. So I need to make a box before we begin. We're going to use this to help us working with the UCS, which is this right here. So I want you to just pick the box command. And just drag in any direction, left and right, and then drag up so you can see a random size box. Let's take the color off. We need to draw this circle right here as a cylinder in the direction of that's horizontal to the object. If I were to extrude the circle, it's pointing in the wrong direction. 
and I cannot use the align command like you would expect onto here. So we're going to try something different. The commands I'm talking about are controlling the UCS, which I think AutoCAD now calls them coordinates. Yeah, there's different ways to do this now. I'll show you a few ways. Drag your rectangle up a bit. We're going to have a pull down menu that is rather extensive, so I want to make sure you can see the very bottom. The command we're going to use is called UCS. Type in UCS. Take ortho off so you have freedom of movement. Notice how the UCS can be placed on different surfaces of an object. And the X, Y, and Z directions change. We want Z to go in this direction along this edge of the top of the object. There's different ways in which to make this happen. The down arrow will show you the different techniques. You can choose a face. If you create UCS orientations, you give them names, you can use those. By object, and so on. The quickest method I'm going to use is a ZA method or z-axis. If you pick this, then you just need to pick opposite points of a line to tell the program where the origin is going to be located and in the direction of z. So now I have z in that direction. You may have saw the, the grid move. I'll take the grid off so it doesn't confuse you, but there's z in that direction. Let me undo that. The other method is three point right here, where you could pick the origin Decide which way is X, decide which way is Y. Seems like I want Y this way to have Z go in that direction. This time you do want ortho on when you use three point. And you can see that Z is on that direction. Take off the grid again. Let me undo that. Let me take the grid off first before we use it. Now type in UCS, enter, hit the down arrow. So face, for example. I would probably want the face I can't access back there unfortunately so I'm going to use this face and flip it. Let's see if I can flip it next. Next. Let me see. Let's flip. There it is right there. So Z is going the direction I want and I could accept it. So there's Z. But the origin is not where I want it exactly. But the idea is here. Now there's a reason why we did all of this. We're going to draw a circle right here at a diameter of 7 16 type in circle or here it is circle at a diameter 7 16 so diameter we're gonna snap to this point here and you can see let me make it large that the circle is in the direction of the X and Y plane the, in other words a two-dimensional object needs to be on the X and Y coordinate system type in 7 16 and you'll draw a circle on its side I guess you could say now when we extrude it it'll extrude in the direction of Z if you noticed before, extrusions always go in the direction of Z. So pick extrude, pick the circle, hit enter. Now I'm going to make this object really long because the length won't matter. This will be moved over here and then subtracted. So here's our cylinder. Let's take a look at it. Now let's move it into place. In order to draw on this surface, the UCS XY plane, X or Y, needs to be going vertical. Right now, X and Y is. We don't need to move the UCS over here. This orientation already implies that we're drawing in a plane in this direction. Let me draw a rectangle to try and help you visualize what I'm trying to say. Okay, that's the XY plane. So we need to draw a line down from the top, which happens to be 9 16, so it tells us where the center of that hole is. Let me use a different color so you can see what we're doing. So line, snap to the midpoint of this curve, it happens to be right there, point down, type in 9 16 This is the center of the hole right there. So let's move this over there. Let's move this object from the center of this to right here, to the end point of that line. I can do that because I'm moving with the UCS icon in the X and Y plane in three-dimensional space. Let's now make this cylinder longer in this direction. And let's see what we've done so far. We have
have drawn a cylinder through the object so we can subtract it out with the subtract command. So we got to do two things, subtract and union, so let's take care of that. Let's subtract the large feature, enter the little feature, enter, there's a hole, union, these two features, enter, there's our object, as if it was a completed full object. However, we're going to draw this as a full section, so now we need to use a new command. The new command is called slice, right there. Or you can just type it in. To slice, we need three points along a nonlinear path in order to slice the object. So before we begin, we need to find three points that are nonlinear. Let's take off the color. Let's just randomly pick the poly, 3D polyline command and see if we can find three nonlinear points along this imaginary edge in which for us to cut. I see one here, which means I'll probably have one for the top of that center here. I see this point here. There's a point here. There's a whole bunch of them, it looks like. There's one there, and here, up here, the back midpoint, nothing back here. There's the center marks of these circles. All of these happen to be along the same plane. All those right there happen to be along the same plane. Let me draw a rectangle to show you what I mean. Well, I can't actually until I change the UCS. So I'll use three point. I'll use my box. I want X to go this way, Y to go down. Now I could draw a rectangle on this plane. So let's make this larger with the correct grip movement, of course. I'm trying to show you what we're slicing with the plane. Let's type in region. Again, this is only for visual purposes only, not need for you to do. There it is right there. So that shows you where it's going to be sliced, as you can see there. Also have my slicing plane with the three corners of this region. But in reality, you can use any lines that are snapping along the center of this object. So let's pick slice. So pick slice. The first step is select your object. Hit enter, then hit the down arrow to choose one of the many different options. We're going to pick the three points method. So pick that option and pick three points along the plane of this cutting plane. In this case, a rectangle. You may or may not have the rectangle. So let's pick points along this path. So here's one, two, three. After you pick the three points, it's asking you to specify a point or desired side, or hit the down arrow, keep both sides. Desired side means I, it, the side you want to keep. So if I touch this surface here, this half will disappear. If I touch anywhere on this surface over here, this half will disappear. I'm going to pick on keep both sides so you can see the slice. Let's turn on the color. Let's remove this rectangle so we can see what we're doing. Okay. See, two separate parts. You may need to replay this video to repeat that step. Just move this out of the way, or those on. There's our three-dimensional sliced object. Pretty cool, I think. And from here, you will work with setting up the object like before. Finding your scale factor in which to display both your, your uh, full section, in this case, and your three-dimensional full section using multiple viewports, just like you learned in the previous video. There's my viewport right there. Draft is never easy. Put the title lock back on. M view command on the correct layer. 
the viewport layer and view this is going to be for my display of my I would like a hidden view I would like to look for the proper isometric I believe it's going to be southeast isometric there it is right there I have all these lines here that are in the way over here I have other features that need to be displayed for, and there's something new I need to show you with regards to layers by the way since we have multiple viewports, I might as well show you that in this video. So let me change to a 2D drawing environment. I should save my work first before I do that so I don't lose anything. Let me go to layer properties and show you something new. See this entire new section of columns? This information has to do with the viewport layers, the layers that are currently in what's called floating model space. See the VP, that's, that's our viewport freeze. We got viewport color, viewport line types, so on and so forth. AutoCAD being what it is, it's very complex. What they're showing you here is you have the ability to draw with color and layers and set line types and line weights and then when it comes to printing you can then customize every single layer again by color its line types and line weights there is another freeze and thaw layer for viewports and the other viewports so there's quite a few of them here <clears throat> this is new for me I never knew that you could change the viewport color which I assume if I pick all these layers I can make everything white and the colors in which I designed them probably stay yep that's pretty cool now I know what to do in the future so I just learned something new just now so I'm really happy about that color thing anyway let's go back to this inside this viewport my drop down menu will have another column here which is freeze and thaw in current viewport. For this one, I only want to see my 3D drawing. So I'm going to hit the down arrow and turn off the other layers. See the little sun icon turn into a snowflake? And now this is isolated by itself. Over here, I do not want to see my 3D object. So in this viewport, I would go down this pull down menu and notice all of them are the sun again on this column. I'll just take off the 3D layer. Let's see what layer this is on. I'll take out the construction layer in the viewport. I guess I need to delete that little thing right there been deleted okay so I'm currently in floating model space adjusting my line types turn the inline layer back on center line layer back on double click outside here these should be on the viewport layer which they are and I need to turn them off but I don't want to see those when I print yes I would take that current layer off now I'll take a look at here Here's a viewport scale that I believe 346 xp I need to scale this at 346 xb Z enter, 346 xp enter, PS enter. Let's take a look at my print preview. Did it come out of black and white? I hope it does. This will answer a lot of questions I've been having about printing in black and white when everything else is in color. Letter extends center of the plot one to one. Monochrome, apply the layout. Let's hope it's in color. I mean, let's hope it's in black and white. Almost. So, what am I looking for? Ah, uh, the viewport I have for there is too small. It doesn't show that detail. This seems to be okay except for the color. It's still orange. It's still a mystery to me. I have to update my title block, it looks like. So I would go back to here, not print it of course, hit cancel, turn on my viewport layer, 
and pull this up to reveal more content. I may want to move this one over a little bit. Make a different layer current. Turn off the viewport layer. And print preview. I could do a better job centering this orthographic drawing. Now I know your drawing is the one that has the full section on it. I opened up, I don't actually have that showing at the moment. I have displayed this one instead. Let's see if that becomes an issue or not. Yeah, see, that's based on that. I'm almost sure there's a new type of viewport command that lets you not draw rectangles. Let's find out. May as well learn together, right? So let's see. M view. Get the down arrow. All right, so I see there's a polygon. Let's see what that looks like. Like a viewport that's triangular shaped. As big as possible. Oh my goodness, look at that. Uh, zoom extends, zoom 346p. Traded to Southeast Isometric. Should have done that first. I did delete the old viewport. So that means I need to go back in here and control what layers are seen in this viewport. Sometimes I go too fast, it closes on me like there. So just close everything but the, I mean, freeze everything but the. 3D layer. Let's make this hidden. My viewports appear to be black. I don't know why. Let's pick these and put them on the viewport layer. Still look that color. And let's make sure they're turned off. And let's take a look and see what a print looks like now with this new viewport at a polygonal shape. Yeah, that's exciting. All right. This is the end of the video, have fun with that.